Hi there, this is Todd Taylor from the Office of Online Learning, and today we'll be looking at Padlet. Padlet is like a online notice board. It's a tool which can use or for students to post little notes on the screen like we have here. Let's have a look at how we access Padlet in Brightspace, create a Padlet, as well as then insert it into Brightspace. So Padlet is an external tool, which means that it's not a tool that Brightspace has developed. Another provider has developed it and they support it. At the same time, the tool is integrated into Brightspace. You can access it from Brightspace. Doing so ensures you are logged in to Padlet using your FIT account. If you create Padlet from another account, Brightspace will not be able to recognize it. So we really recommend that you access Padlet from within Brightspace. Let's do this now. So to access Brightspace, I mean to access Padlet, we just go to the module we want to insert it. So I'm going to insert it into this module. And then in the content pane, we select the existing activities button. And from the drop down menu, we select Padlet. From the Add Activity dialog box, we choose the Make a Padlet button. Padlet will open up in a new window, and now we're ready to create a Padlet. To create a Padlet, we'll use a blank board. The first step is to give our Padlet a name. I'm going to call this my stop, I mean start, stop, continue activity. Then we choose a format. There are six formats. There is a wall, which is just like a notice board. There is stream, which is like a social media stream, such as Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, where your posts are organized on top of each other. There's the timeline view, which organizes posts horizontally. There is the grid view, which is like a wall, but then using sections can also group posts into like mini walls as well. There's a canvas option, which allows you to create mind maps. And then there's the map section, which allows you to add posts to a map. In this case, we'll use the wall option. Next, there are the sections options. You can either have no sections, or you can add sections. Sections are like buckets where students can post posts. So by adding sections, you can start having all the posts into various columns. In this case, we're going to be using sections because we have three buckets that we'll be asking students to put their content in. A start bucket, a continue bucket, and a stop bucket. Okay, so we're now ready to hit done to initially create our Padlet. Okay, the next step is to update our Padlet settings. This will allow us to do things such as change the background, to add icons, as well as control the information which is displayed on posts. So to update the settings, I'm going to click on the settings button, which is this little cog button just there. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to add a description, a prompt for this activity. So I'm just going to copy and paste in a prompt right now and as you can see that that gets automatically updated across the top of the padlet next I'm going to add an icon just to make it a little bit more interesting since this is a reflection I'm going to put it in a magnifying glass I'm just going to type in magnifying 
here and type, put in a magnifying glass. There we go. So I've added an activity, and then on the, I mean, added an icon, then on the hit save. Now we can next we can update the background color. I like to remove clutter, so I'm going to choose a very plain background color because you can see even now with the greeny, tealy background, the text can be hard to read. So I'm just going to change this to be white. And I'm going to save that. Okay. Now I'm just going to scroll down to the engagement section. And this will allow us to enable commenting by other learners. So oftentimes with interactive instruction, interactive instruction, you want your learners to be able to comment on each other's posts. So by checking that toggle, you will allow um, your learners to be able to, in, to interact with each other. And with the reactions option, we can also add things like liking as well. So let's turn that on. Next, in the author and timestamp section, I'm going to show the author as well. This is so you know who's posting uh, and can see what time they posted as well. And the final step here in terms of my settings is I'm going to only allow myself to be able to remake this Padlet as well. So students won't accidentally remake the Padlet and comment on their own. I'm just going to make it so that only I can remake the, make this Padlet and so there's only one version of it for our students. To close out of the settings, just click on the close button up the top. There we go. So in the next step, I'm going to create my sections. So there's two ways we can edit the section names. We can either use the vertical ellipsis button here to um, add um, sections, or we can double click on it and just type in a new name. So let's say call it start. Then I'm going to click on add section. I'll create one called stop. And then I'll add another section called continue. And then I'll hit the done button. So adding sections is pretty easy. Next, I'll start adding some posts. So I'm going to create some starter posts with instructions for students so they know what they're meant to post under start, stop, and continue. There's a number of ways that we can add a post. One way is by simply double clicking on the Padlet. So to double click, I click twice in rapid succession. And then we have our, um, our box to add a Padlet just there. So in the start in the subject, I'm going to type a subject name, and so that's just called one of my start instructions. Then for a caption, I'm going to type in a little bit of a prompt so that students know what to do. Next, I'm just going to make sure that it's going to the right section. So at the moment, it's aligned with the continue se um, section. I'm going to change that to be my start section. And you can also change the color of your posts as well. In this case, I'm going to make it green, green for start. And then to add my post to my Padlet, I'm just going to hit publish. There we go. So you can see that uh, my name's been added to it, as well as there's a timestamp, there's a subject, my caption, and students have the option of commenting on my post as well as liking as well. So a second method of adding posts is by clicking on one of the plus symbols. So you'll notice that under each section there's a plus symbol, and there's also a plus symbol down the bottom of the Padlet as well. So I'm just going to click on that plus symbol, and we, we have the post input again. So this time I call up my stop instructions. I'm going to copy and paste in my caption. And then make sure it goes to the right section. So not start, I want to make this one stop. And in this case, I'm going to change the color to red. You also have the option of adding attachments too, if you like. So they can be documents, videos, pictures, 
all links as well. So I'm just going to publish this one. And there is my second one. And the third method to add a post is by copying and pasting into Padlet. So I select Padlet. I've got some text on my clipboard right now. I'm just going to go Control or Command V to paste it. And there you can see it automatically populates both the caption and the title or the subject with my post. I want to change the subject so it would be the continue instructions. Okay, then we just add it to the right section. We can change the color, we'll make it yellow this time, and hit publish. There we go. So what we've done now is we have added posts, we've created the Padlet, we've added sections, and the other thing that we can do is that we can edit our posts as well. So to edit a post, on each individual post, you'll notice there's a vertical ellipsis, the three dots arranged vertically. You can click on those ellipsis, and then you can edit the post there. So if you click on that, it'll open up um, the dialog box, so you can change the, the words or add an attachment if you want to. So I close that again. You can also choose to pin the post from this point of view as well. So you can pin the post, so that way, if the posts are reordered, that your post will stay, stay at the top as well. So I'm just going to pin all these posts. So I'm just clicking on the ellipsis at the top and then choosing pin the post. Okay, so we've now looked at how to add, I mean, create a Padlet. So now let's add it to Brightspace. To add it to Brightspace, we need to go back to Brightspace. So I'm just going to close this Padlet down and we're back in Brightspace, we need to close out this dollar box again and reopen it. So there's two ways that we can add Padlet to Brightspace. We can add it as an external tool, or we can add it as part of an assignment. The first method I'm going to show you is adding it as a third-party tool. So to add it as a third-party tool from the existing activities button, we choose Padlet. There we go. Then we just scroll down till we find our option. So here it is. This is our stop, I mean start, stop, continue activity. We created it two minutes ago. So I'm just going to select that one. And it's been added to Brightspace. Next, we will need, need to add it to the gradebook. So if you want to add it to the gradebook, you just click on the activity, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll notice there's an add a grade item button. I'll click on that. I'll choose the new grade item setting. In the name field, I will type a name for my Padlet, and I call this one my demonstration Padlet. Um, external tool. If you use categories in your gradebook, you can choose your category from the drop down there. Next, we scroll down to the points. Often we grade out of 100, so we we'll make that one 100. And you can also update the weight as well. In this case, I'm just going to type 100. And finally, you can hit create to add it to your gradebook as well. The final step here is we just hit the save button to save our changes. So now we have our Padlet linked to our gradebook as well. So students will be able to see how they did in the Padlet when they're looking at this page when they're viewing it. So that's the first method of adding Padlet to Brightspace. The advantage of this method is that the Padlet shows in a wide window and students can see everything that's um, on the Padlet. Let's look at how we add Padlet to an assignment. To add Padlet to an assignment, we use the Assignments tool. So I'm just saying click on Assignments. Then we click on the New Assignment button. 
we can, in the assignment title, we can give our assignment a name. So I'm just going to call it the start, stop, continue activity. And unlike the external tool, you can also give your palette a due date in assignments. So an advantage of using assignments as opposed to an external tool is that you can set a due date which will appear in the work to do pane. I'm just going to choose next Friday. Next, we're going to add our palette to our assignment. To add the palette to the assignment, in the instructions rich text editor, we click on the insert stuff button. From the Insert Stuff dialog box, we choose Padlet. And then we choose the palette that we wish to add to our course. In this case, it's the Start, Stop, Continue activity. And then we can hit Insert. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. So one thing you may notice when you add it as an assignment is that the window is narrower so you might find that part of your Padlet is cut off. That's one disadvantage of using assignments as opposed to external tools. Next we're going to add this to our gradebook. To add this assignment to our gradebook if you choose to you can click on the grade out of text box type in the points, click on the In Gradebook button. From the drop-down menu, select Edit or Link to Existing, and then you can add it to your gradebook. If you use categories, you can choose a category from this dialog box. And then hit Continue. Okay. Our next step is that we're going to change our submission and completion options. So currently this is says file submission, which prompts students to submit a file with the Padlet, but we don't want them to submit a file or any text. So in that case, I'm going to change this to observed in person. So there's nothing to submit. There's no submit button. So from the submission type drop down box, I'm going to click on observed in person. Then we have an option of when this is marked as completed. I'm going to mark it as completed when I evaluate the Padlet. What this means is that a student who doesn't do it doesn't get it automatically marked as complete when on the due date. Um, if they don't do it, it'll be, um, it'll be marked as incomplete until I give it a zero or I give it another grade. You can also set start and end dates for the Padlet if you wish to. In this case, I will leave it blank. Okay, there's one more step that we have to do. And if we want to make this visible to students, we click on the hidden toggle to make it visible. And then we hit save and close. Okay, so there's our activity. To add this to content, I go to the module that I want to insert this into. So I'm going to go to content. From the navigation pane, just make sure I'm now in the right module. So I'm in the Padlet working module. And then in the content pane, I select existing activities. And then I choose assignments. And then I can choose the assignment that I want to insert. So it's this start, I mean, st start, stop, continue activity. And this will insert it into Brightspace. So you'll notice that when it's added as an assignment, you'll be also set at the level of the module. But you'll notice that some, it might be cut off there as well. So we have this horizontal scroll bar. If you go into the assignment as well, I'm not in student mode, but um, generally what happens is this is what students will see when they go into the assignment. So um, it's the, the visual aspect of Padlet may not be as appealing as what it is when it's an external tool, but you have trade-offs there. So hopefully I'll try to show you the two points of view for Padlet, and um, you can choose the one that suits your needs the most. Thank you for watching. See you later.